is a pro woman bill. This is a bill to save women's sports because frankly, it won't be saved if we don't clarify the law. And welcome back to Sunday Square Off. That was Republican State Representative Nancy Bartow of North Phoenix, a leading social conservative at the Capitol, defending her bill that would ban transgender girls and young women from school sports. The bill passed by just one vote in the Arizona House last week. It now goes to the state Senate. Arizona Republic reporter Andrew Oxford covered the bill and he joins us. Welcome back to Square Off. Thanks for having me. Legislation is called the Save Women's Sports Act, passed by a 31-29 vote in the House. Its fate in the Senate unclear, but we'll get to that. First, let's tell you a, bit, a little bit about the legislation. Here are key provisions. Male or female sports must be based on participants' sex at birth. Transgender girls or young women are banned from female teams or individual events. A student can appeal by presenting a signed doctor's statement that analyzes the student's genetic makeup. And schools can be sued for having women-only teams. Walk us through the bill. We heard Nancy Bardo's defense. It is pro-women. Why do supporters say that? That's right. They argue that the, you know, allowing transgender girls to compete in girls sports gives them some sort of a, a advantage over their competitors and that this is about you know leaving girl sports to girls uh, Democrats have countered that they can't really point to any cases of that happening here in Arizona uh, Nancy Bardo told me that there wasn't any particular instance in her district that brought this up uh, transgender athletes have been competing actually in school sports here in Arizona I think since about 2014 the Arizona Interscholastic Association came up with some rules and uh, there hasn't exactly been an outcry and just to get back to the uh, supporters arguments uh, House Speaker uh, Rusty Bowers a leading supporter of this said he's protecting women and also protecting their rights under Title IX that's right what do you mean this by is, that right this is what uh, uh, you know, guarantees the right to compete for you know, uh, women and girls sports and have equal opportunities in that in that arena when you get to the college level that's right yeah. and so they argue this is very much just an issue of fairness uh, however you know this is uh, like I said, there hasn't exactly been any challenge to this at the state level yet. There's an interesting provision in there that a, a transgender girl, or young woman who wants to compete would have to show a genetic test That's to right. a school. That seems to me like there might be privacy issues involved. The way there. the bill was originally written actually would have required a three part test if a student's gender was uh, in dispute. They would have had to have gotten an analysis of hormone levels, they would have had to have gotten a genetic analysis, and they would have had to have had a, a physical exam you're dealing, with their, uh, uh, dealing with their genitals. And that prompted Daniel Hernandez, a Democrat from uh, Tucson and the, the head of the LGBT caucus, to say, you know, if SB 1070 was the show us your papers law, this is the show us your genitals law. Nancy Bardo walked that back and eventually made it just a genetic analysis. Uh, but, you know, Democrats really are on, seized on that to argue that this is a you know, pretty big step to argue, you know, to, to require. Yeah, and the Arizona Interscholastic Association, which governs school athletics uh, in Arizona, says, as you did, this isn't a problem. Nancy Bardo wants to take their power away. Yeah, I asked her if she this issue, and they say just a this. handful of, as you said, over the last decade or so. Yeah, some lawmakers said that there are currently 10 or so uh, transgender students competing in school sports. Some of them are boys and so this wouldn't affect them, but uh, and the AIA says, you know, it's got policies in place. Uh, Nancy Bardo said she never did go to them to talk about these uh, policies, how she thinks she might want to change them or something like that. Again, Democrats have argued that this is kind of a solution in search of a problem in that okay, sense. Okay, so let's get to the politics of this. It now goes to the Senate, That's where right. you, two votes can kill this. Uh, Senator Kate Brophy McGee, Republican, faces a very tough re-election fight. Senator Heather Carter going up against Representative Nancy Bartow That's being right. primaried by her. And Governor Doug Ducey, who would ultimately be on the spot to sign this if it passed the Senate. How do you think that will play out? Yeah, I think that, look, uh, Senator Carter and Senator Brophy McGee have actually both co-sponsored non-discrimination laws in the past. I don't think this is their kind of bill. I don't see them as wanting to fight the culture wars and, and do that this session. Uh, and as far as, you know, particularly Senator Kate Brophy McGee is concerned, she's facing, you know, a pretty tough race against 
Democrats who this in some ways might play into their hands and the Democrats can go back to more moderate districts and say, hey, can you believe these legislators? They want to spend time talking about what's in kids' pants and not, you know, the issues of the day. And finally, does the governor want to see this on his desk? I don't get the sense. I've asked him about this. He doesn't want to talk about it. It's, I haven't heard a ringing endorsement from him. I don't know where this lands on his hierarchy of what he likes to talk about, the things that matter, but I get the sense it's not too And a lot there. of big businesses are opposed, and that's something we know matters to Doug Ducey. That's right. Got to end it there. Andrew Oxford, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having me.